think the biggest mistake I've made in raid, <laughs> I don't want to say this because it's, I feel like it's going to send the wrong message, but at the same time, I think it's something that um, I myself haven't really ever said out loud because I never wanted to admit it, but downloading and playing raid Shadow Legends, that's probably one of the biggest mistakes I've made. And why do I say that? It's it's not just because of the thousands that I've spent that ultimately amount to nothing, right? When I really stop and think about it, when I'm laying on my deathbed, I'm not gonna give a flying fuck if I have a Siffy. I'm not gonna give a shit about placing plat. I'm not gonna give a crap about doing billions in Hydra. None of that's gonna matter to me. I've spent thousands in raid. When I go back and think about it, I'm like, dude, that's thousands I could have spent on my wife or thousands I could have spent on an experience, on a trip. With the amount of money I've spent on raid, I could have visited Europe twice, maybe more. That's not even factoring in opportunity costs, right? Because if I were to take that money that I've spent in raid and actually invested it into, I don't know, um, a Roth IRA, the amount of money I would have generated from from that would have been an actual return. Instead, I have pixels. Now, I'm not completely complaining about it. I don't think it's entirely a bad thing because it led me here to YouTube. I don't think I would have comfortably started YouTube or doing online content creation were it not for Raid. Most of you don't know, I started out on Twitch. For nine months, I was doing Twitch. Nobody really watched me. I mean, not, I'm not going to say nobody. On average, I had like, what, 13, 14 people watching me on a regular basis. I was streaming every day, sometimes 12, 13, 14 hours. But ultimately, I'm here now and I'm enjoying making YouTube. In fact, YouTube is something that I want to do full time. So in that aspect, I don't regret it because of XYZ reasons on YouTube. And I get to connect with you guys. I, I get to connect with a really cool community. If Raid did not have a good community like we do right now, I don't think I would be playing Raid for as long as I did. But that's probably my biggest mistake. And it's kind of like a like a cheap mistake that I've that I'm giving you guys. And I'll give you a more actually relatable in-game. Unless this is relatable to you and you're one of those guys that are just completely obsessed and addicted to raid to the point where you feel like it's not healthy but you can't stop. That's me. Even more so now that I make content for it. But yeah. I think about all the time that I've spent. I've probably spent thousands of hours. Think about it. If I, I, was, I was playing, I've been playing Raid every single day, pretty much every single day, except for a seven month break that I took right before COVID. Seven to eight month break I took right before COVID. I was playing every single day, almost 24 seven. Every waking moment, my phone was on. If you think about that, how many hours cumulatively over five plus years is that? I don't know. I'm assuming it's somewhere in the thousands, right? That's a lot of time spent in a game. The game doesn't end. So when I really think about it, yeah, that's probably that's probably the biggest mistake. My brother got me into Raid. He was like, oh, dude, use this referral link and we'll get rewards. And and then he stopped playing and he left me here. But yeah, that's that's yeah, that's my biggest mistake. The time and the money that I've spent in Raid um, that I'm never going to get back. But I can't really bring myself to stop, especially now that I'm on YouTube doing this. Um, but, you know, the bright side is I've gotten to this point where I feel comfortable enough to not spend in Raid anymore and I haven't spent anything. It sucks that I spent so much to learn this lesson that it doesn't matter how much you spend, you're still going to have the same amount of enjoyment as the next guy who is free to play. Because I know a lot of guys who are free to play and they enjoy the game just as well as I do. Granted, the argument can be made, oh, I can do a lot more when I have money spent in the game. And I can do more when I have all the champions. Yeah, that's true. But if you treat the game as it is as a game, it's not going to stress you, right? Because I could have I could have done, you know, when I was level 30, I started spending money because I wanted a Lego. I fell for the FOMO. I fell for everything Polarium threw at me. Started spending money because I, I hit a rock wall. I didn't know what to do. And I thought, oh, you know, getting this... Sacred Shard is going to help me. And, and you know, it did. I got a Cupidus at level 35. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, we could go ad nauseum. We could go to the stars about this. But let me know what your guys' mistakes are. And let me know if you can relate to this specific mistake. 
Can you relate to this specific thing where I'm saying, hey, my biggest mistake is downloading Raid and getting into Raid? Does that resonate with you guys? Do you feel that too? Let me know. I'd be interested to talk to you guys about that. But actually, in-game, what are some mistakes I've made? Off the top of my head, I can think of using Lego books to power up some of my epics because I didn't know the difference. Tyrell was an OG epic champion who was really good. And I was like, I don't have any epic books, but I have a few Lego books. I used it on him. Big mistake. Oh, speaking of Cupidus, I ended up pulling a dupe Cupidus and I fed him to another epic. Before Mashaled got buffed and he was really cool and he was a, a complete terrorizer, he was, he hit like a wet noodle. He hit like a plant. He was absolute trash. Probably the worst, worst, worst Lego in raid. Everybody was calling him my salad. And I figured why not just use him as a chicken. I regret it today because hell, I could have had like a another like a plus something Masha led by now, but you know, it is what it is. Gunning for first place in a champion training event. I had saved up and prepared for it. I had spent money to try to win the champion training event. I went hard in the paint four days, computer on for four days, running RSL helper. And I lost to a Kraken. And it wasn't like a small loss, it was a huge loss, it was a huge gap. This Kraken did not even have the courtesy to give himself a name. He was just, it was just player 912734 or something. The first three days I was winning, I was in the lead, 80,000 points. I had an 80,000 point lead. I did not stop because I knew I had a day left. And I figured, you know what? Um, I, I already know how this works. I'm gonna keep going. I don't wanna like let my heel off anybody's neck. I wake up the next morning, the fourth day, there's a guy, player 9172, whatever his name is, 20,000 points under me in second place. I think to myself, oh shit, I start freaking out. This guy's climbing and he's climbing fast. I keep refreshing the page. He keeps going up 15,000, 14,000, 10,000, 7,000, 8,000. I wait, hold on, go back 6,000. 2000. Oh shit, he's on my heel. He's on my heel. He doesn't want to let go. No, 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 no. See, this guy was prepared. This guy knew what he was doing. He was waiting. He was waiting for me to expend every resource. So I start freaking out. He's on my heel. Boom. He's mashed with me. And then he's not. And then he's ahead of me. And then I think, okay, well, I'm just going to go buy a pack real quick. So I bought a pack. I bought some Lego books. I dumped those Lego books. I get ahead a couple hundred. I start banging out more more books. Every little book that I had, all the rares, all the epics, all the epics book, uh, uh, epic books that I had, I was booking Legos I did not need to book. I was booking epics that were sitting in my reserve vault. I was booking rares just to feed them into the next champion to level them up for the champion training event. I kept climbing. I kept climbing. But guess what, guys? This guy was blasting past me. I couldn't even like it like you know that scene with with Falcon and Captain America in Avengers where Cap where Falcon's running and he's doing his thing and Captain America's just like on your left and he's lapping the dude. That was me. I was getting lapped. Before I knew it, he had a 30,000 point lead within the hour. Within the fucking hour, guys. I was fuming. I was livid. I knew there was no way I was going to catch up. And this dick decided to stop moving for like, I don't know, maybe like 30 minutes. And in that window of time, I thought, okay, he stopped. He's out. So what did I do? I dropped a few more hundreds of dollars to buy more Lego books. And so I start climbing. I start banging it out. Eventually, I catch up to him again. And I think, okay, cool. I'm going to keep going. Eight hours left. I'm at work and I, I let my my thing just run on my on campaign battles and you know I, I let it go and then I get back to work. An hour or two later I check, boom, he's up again and he's moving. But this time it like I don't know how to explain it. But this guy was like 70,000 points ahead of me. I went home with my head down. I was like there's there's no way. There's no way. I don't know how he did it. But he didn't stop. Before I knew it, he was on the leaderboards. Global leaderboard. Global freaking leaderboards. 
This guy had money, deep pockets, or he'd been saving for the entire year. I don't know what it is, but I stopped at like, I don't know what it was, 83 or something, 83,000. And he was like 130K on the global leaderboard for this. Yeah, so he took Nergigante Archer. That's when I was just like, you know what? It's not worth it anymore. I'm, I'm going to chill out on raid. I'm not going to compete for anything because it's just it, that. So that's probably like the biggest mistake that I've made in raid that one moment. But it was also a defining moment for me when I I really conceptualized and really let this sink in that you are not going to be able to compete. And there's no point in trying because people are just going to be, I don't know, like. They're going to have more money. There's always a bigger fish. They'll have more money than you. They'll have more time than you. Like, you just don't know who's on the other end of that. For the most part. And some people are willing to go pocket, pocket, pocket deep. Some people are, are willing to go into debt to win Nergigante Archer. And she's a great champion. She's an awesome champion. She would have boosted my Hydra score by a few million, maybe a billion. But was it worth it? No. In that champion training event alone, probably could have taken my wife to France. But I digress. That was my biggest mistake. Have you guys ever been in, in that situation before? I think the biggest champion training event prior to that was during COVID. The Krisk event. Everybody going for Krisk. That was, that was a crack in war right there. But let's see what some of these people are talking about. I spent 15 minutes talking about myself. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed, you know seeing my or hearing about my failure and I, it's not like a pity pity thing you know what i mean like we learn from each other's mistakes all right not realizing lego books were only for legos mm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. this one physically hurts to read he got so excited about apothecary he spent six lego books on a rare taking a lego and rare skin to a literal level I was, I was just feeding epics willy-nilly, even Vogoth. Vogoth? You fed an epic to Apothecary. That's crazy. I feel like throwing up. I fed the fat man because I didn't like how his damage deflection read. To be honest, same. Then my friend, my friend built him and I realized how good he was. I don't know how big a mistake that would have been. I'm a newish player, but I won a mythical book somewhere. Or they handed them out for free, I don't remember. And I was thinking of using it on a legendary because how, when the hell am I ever going to get a mythical? Still haven't found a legendary other than the free ones. Decided to keep it, but it was tempting. Keep them, don't waste them. You're, you're gonna get Lego books like crazy from Hydra CV and Doom Tower, that's true. One day you'll get one, maybe. Those books will be game changers to whatever mythic you end up getting. Best thing to do is save them. True. I thought rarity would be like a strength, so a Lego book, that's, that's fair. I thought a Lego book would be like using four or five rares. I was wrong. I made this mistake too. Yeah, I get that. I restarted my account after I used up all my legendary books. I, I'm, I'm, oh my god, on your starter champ? That sucks, yeah. I accidentally fed one of the rares for the nut fusion. Only time I've ever done that big sad. Damn, he missed Newt for that. I think he just took the lead, yeah. Not starting a game a week earlier and missing the Newt fusion. Alternatively, not saving the free early sacred shards and missing the Newt fusion. I used to be so salty, I joined the ninja event I joined after the ninja event was over. I'm over it, but damn, I do feel sorry for new players. So many top tier free login legendaries. UDK, Wukong, staples for PvP, Artak, absolute beast and everything. Yeah, missing all that. I didn't understand how split souls work during the Adeline soul event. I earned four and five star split souls and sold the three star split soul thinking I didn't need the. Oh my gosh, that is true. You know what? On my alt account, I've done this too. I, I I still can't upgrade my Adeline all the way to five. That See, even I make these mistakes, guys. I've been playing for over five years. Granted, Split Souls were just somewhat recently introduced. I made this mistake too. Because I didn't stop and bother to pay attention. But yeah. Fused Weregrin for Makage and somehow fed him. That's That sucks. You have to wait to pull him now for a void. Dear God started playing <laughs> there you go the only correct answer all mistakes were due into this horrible horrible first one that's true i would have never made any of these mistakes if i hadn't started playing spending gems on the 11 ancient packs 
taking crap champs to 60. Yeah, same boat. We've all done that. But I don't know. I, I'm actually not against this. I know a lot of people have said, and people will continue to say, don't spend gems on the 11th pack ancient ancient thingy. But I'm actually not against it. Like, I'm, I'm cool with it. Like, I do it. Probably not the best thing, right? Most people say spend your energy or spend your gems on energy. But I have nothing against this, especially if you're in a pinch for like a fusion or something. Like, this comes in handy. Yeah, look at this. What should gems be spent on? Energy, energy refills. I thought the best way to farm champs forever was uh, to farm champs forever. Apparently, I was really wrong. I hadn't met the mentality. Okay, anyway. Uh, taking a break, missing out, not getting our mons, forgetting to fuse our mons. More to macabre, more to macabre early on. The other thing about this, guys, is especially if you're early, if you're an early player, you just started and you don't have a huge roster, I don't see anything wrong with this. That's just me. I mean, let's be real, right? Because when you first start playing raid and, you know, you're not with an account that has all the champions from the get-go, I'm not going to say how, but, you know, people can tactically acquire accounts that have specific champions at the, um, you know, at the very start. And that, you know, I'm not judging. I'm saying, you know, but I'm saying anybody who starts out with basically nothing, you're going to want to build your roster. So I think pulling shards right away and using gems for the ancient things is not a bad way to get a, to get around in the beginning. But then the counter argument for that is to buy your time, really save for a fusion and then get something guaranteed. You know, there's, there's different ways to go about it. Not putting one man defense in gold, in gold arena. I was in, oh, not putting in one man defense in arena. I was in gold V, gold five, only being able to fight a team or two every refresh, had a really strong team on defense, putting in one man gave me such easier teams I can farm. This is true. I think a lot of people don't realize how this works. You put in a one man defense, you're gonna drop in rank. And um, let me show you. Uh, this is my wife's account. But basically, you can get a bunch of free fights if you just have a really weak team. So, like, if I were just, if I just put Sun Wukong by himself, if Sun Wukong is here by himself, pretty much everybody I would fight is going to be like this, a one-man defense. Because, you know, the, the raid calculates your, your ranking and gives you people based on that. And, um, yeah, so there's that. Using all my early Lego books, didn't do the Encore Fusion, didn't spend to get Narcis. I don't think that's a miss. You don't want to spend for that. Skip Narcis, crunching all the Aniris and Royal Guards and Seers and Maneaters? Oh my god. Fed Geomancer, unbinded a dupe for your Carl. Not committing to Live Arena earlier? I can see that. Downloaded the app. Uh, yeah, that way. Yeah. Float on the track like a Segway. Go. 